Oftentimes when someone starts a journey of changing their nutrition or bringing their calories down or something like that, what tends to happen is they go online, right? And as you guys know, what I've talked about is online, oftentimes, or I should say more often than not, it's going to give you too low of a calorie range. It tells most women to eat 1,200 calories and most men to eat maybe 15 to 1,600 calories or something crazy low like that, which as you guys know and what I've discussed, results in a low metabolic rate and a few other things. Today, I actually wanna dive into some of those other things. I'm finding that a lot of people are asking me the question of, hey, I have lost some weight, or maybe I have restricted my calories to this, this, and this, and I'm noticing these symptoms, is this normal? Now, one thing that I have to say is the people asking me this, actually nine times out of 10 do not have an eating disorder, or at least a formally diagnosed eating disorder, and again, are in the situation that I just described, where they've tried to change their intake, or create a calorie deficit, or lose weight, or whatever it might be, and ultimately ended up eating too little. So what these things are, first and foremost, persistent bloating. I know I bring that up all the time and I'm probably gonna bring it up a hundred more times because it's one of the biggest things that I get questions on that oftentimes has to do with not taking in enough food. So persistent bloating. The next one is actually losing their period. A lot of people are kind of normalizing this or making it seem like, oh, it's just a part of weight loss, but it's not normal at all. And I'll discuss that in a minute. Loss of hair or making their hair like dull or brittle or something like that, but most notably noticing that a lot of it's like falling out more than they would think. Poor energy and poor sleep, those two things are kind of tied together. And then also feeling cold all of the time. Now, for some of you who are familiar with eating disorders, you may say like, Hmm, that sounds a lot like some of the signs and symptoms of eating disorders, and you're right, because what's happening with eating disorders is people are not eating enough. So even if you're not formally diagnosed with an eating disorder, when you restrict too low, even if it's just with the intent of what you thought you were supposed to do, you can see these impacts. So let's go over the bloating thing. Again, I know I've talked about it a bunch of times, but when you're not taking in enough food, what's going to happen is your gut actually starts to slow down. Your gut is responsive to how you treat it. And so then what happens is when you do eat, you often experience bloating. What can also happen from not taking in enough food as it pertains to the bloating is that your body stops making enough digestive enzymes. So that is something that your body needs energy to make. And when your body's not making enough digestive enzymes, then again, when you eat food, there's not enough enzymes to break down that food and can result in bloating. The second one, like I mentioned, is actually losing your period. So this one I really want to dive into a lot. I get a lot of people asking me, hey, is it normal? that I've lost, I don't know, a certain amount of weight and I lost my period. Or I started restricting my intake because of X, Y, and Z and I've lost my period. Now again, these are people who do not have a formally diagnosed eating disorder, but clearly have been eating way too little because losing your period, I'm just gonna be totally blunt here, is not a normal response to losing weight if you're doing it healthily. If you are losing weight at a slow pace, like we always talk about, and really focusing on just slow fat loss and still eating enough and not doing it in a severely restrictive way, you should not lose your period. So what happens when you lose your period is similar to like kind of the digestive enzyme thing, is your body just doesn't have the energy to make those hormones and to expend it on having a period. So oftentimes we lose that. Now, we have to get that back. So what I always tell people who come in who maybe lost their period is, first and foremost, we gotta get that back. So that's going to take eating more food. And yes, that may mean some weight regain, right? But that's important because we're clearly what happened before is that we either lost weight too quickly or restricted calories too low, which resulted in the loss of period. So one thing I wanna address about that is it is not okay to just let that go on. The longer that you lose your period, the more at risk you are for other issues, most notably osteopenia and osteopenia osteoporosis, which can be low bone density. And that is really detrimental and we want to avoid that, right? So if you have lost your period, we have to work on getting that back. So please eat more. Now, what everybody also asks is, well, how long is it going to take for me to get that back? Everybody's a little bit different. For some people, the minute they start eating more, within a month or two, they gain back their period. But with other people, it can take much longer. But we have to ride that journey because that's actually a really important thing to make sure that we do not lose in any part of this process. 
Now, the poor energy and the poor sleep, that can actually be from not fueling your body enough. So when you're not taking in enough, especially protein, your energy is likely going to drop because, of course, your body doesn't have the energy to expend on your day to day. And then that also translates to the poor sleep, because what will often happen is even if you don't necessarily feel hungry, your body's kind of waking you up in the middle of the night, hoping that you'll like eat something. Actually, a very common thing that I see with individuals who are working on taking in more food for one reason or another start to notice that they wake up hungry. And then that's a good indicator to me that we've got to take in more food early in the day. So both poor energy and poor sleep can be a result of not taking in enough. Both of those should resolve as you take in more food. Now, last one, which is feeling cold all of the time, that's actually usually a good sign that your metabolic rate has maybe dropped too low. What can happen is your body, again, doesn't want to expend the energy on heating you up, and so that's why you feel cold all of the time. So clearly, all of these things are a result of not taking in enough food. So how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? Now, first and foremost, like I've always said, if you're on some sort of program recommending that you eat 1,200 calories, I can guarantee you that that's too low. We need to pull that up. The other thing is, of course, we want to create a calorie deficit off of that total caloric need for the day, which means you take your resting metabolic rate, which is how many calories you need doing absolutely nothing. And then we have to add for a little bit of just getting up and moving around because you're not just doing nothing. You're quite literally getting up and going to the bathroom or whatever it might be, even if it's small amounts of movement. And then you add for exercise and that's going to give you a total number. And then from that, remember, you only want to subtract a very small amount, maybe 200 to 500 calories. What I find is too many people are creating this like 1,000, 1,500 calorie or more deficit, which we do not want to do. That's going to result in these things happening. And if these things are happening, that's a really, really good sign to you right now that we got to work on taking in more food. If you need support for that, please reach out to us or write in the comments what your questions are. Or if you can, go see another dietitian in your area because we definitely want to make sure that you're fueled enough and you're not experiencing some of these symptoms of under eating. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. We're so glad that you're here. Again, any questions on this, please leave them in the comments.